welcome to the 2023 Netball World Cup, where Fox Netball is the only place you can catch every game of the two-week tournament. And to continue the excitement as we count down to the first game on Friday, we're going to spend the next hour previewing the Australian Diamonds. We're going to look at all the teams in our pool. We've got to scope out who our biggest rivals will be. And one must always have an eye on the Jamaicans, because rumour has it, this could be their year. But before we get to any of that, let's take a moment to remember how Australia has ended up here. Let's look at the Diamonds Road to Cape Town. Our Australian Diamonds have had a run unlike any other team. Gold at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. Australia's 1,000th gold medal. Then, the biggest rivalry in netball. Australia v New Zealand. The Diamonds reclaimed the Constellation Cup. He's Jeff Wood scores for Australia. The Constellation Cup is coming back to Australia. No rest for the wicked when these diamonds backed it up with another elite display against England. Now back to Australia. Western, she finds proud. Wallum to win it for Australia. Could you have written that if you tried? Danelle Wallum on the boo. Then hello, 2023. This year, kickstarted with a bang. Oh, that is another massive risk that didn't pay off. What a take from Cara Conan. As the Aussies downed the world's best at the Quad Series. Now, they take on their biggest challenge on the biggest stage. With unfinished business and a spot in the trophy cabinet. At long last, the pinnacle of our game is finally upon us and our Australian Diamonds carry the pride of our nation all the way with them to Cape Town in South Africa for the World Cup. And I thought, who better to join us for a World Cup preview than the former Diamonds that sit alongside me? It's a warm welcome to Caitlin Thwaites, Kim Green and Kath Cox. Ladies, between you, seven World Cup appearances for five World Cup gold medals. Congratulations on that. No one is better placed to take me inside the mind of what it is to be an Australian diamond at time this time of year. And while we do have an hour to sink our teeth into everything South Africa, Cape Town, the World Cup, I haven't had a chance to get a reaction from you on what clearly is the biggest news in domestic netball in Australia. We've had the confirmation that we have an eighth Suncorp Super Netball successful licence, Kath. This week, we understand Craig Hutchinson and the SEN Media Group in partnership with Nepal Victoria were the successful bid. The club will be based in South East Melbourne and Kelly Ryan, Nepal Australia CEO, declared it was the strongest proposal, a great partnership and a great fit for the game. What's your reaction to the news? Finally! <laughs> I mean, this was meant to happen prior to the season's end, so it was delayed given the grand final, everything was going on, didn't want to be disrupted then. Apparently there were five um, clubs that, well, people that put their hand up for, for nomination for this, and I think it's great that it's in Melbourne. There's obviously a, a massive depth of talent down there. There's great support for the game. They will be aligned with Netball Victoria, which was part of the issue we found with the Collingwood Magpies. So great to see that happen. And we know S SEN has got a, a good association with um, sport. They're involved with four basketball teams already, so they know how to get the sport to work. And I'm really excited about that. The players will be super relieved, mm. and I bet there's some phones ringing already. <laughs> players, certainly. What about a head coach, Caitlin? If you're in charge of being a part of history and creating a club from the ground up, what are the hallmarks or trademarks of a person that you think could take your team to success? Well, it's got to be the first piece of the puzzle, doesn't it? Because that's going to be the draw card that gets the players to sign on the dotted line. You want experience. You want, um, you know, to, to have that idea around what the club's going to be. They've got, got to be selling the direction that the mm. club's going to go so that everybody else can jump on board and get that ship sailing. So what I'm hearing, I think, is Tracy Neville. That's kind of <laughs> where it's going, I think. What we has arrived. <laughs> yeah. What we do know, Kim, is that the club is going to be based in South East Melbourne. What we don't know, though, what remains unclear, what the club's going to be called in the way of a team name and the colours. So I want you to put your thinking cap on. What are you expecting? Yeah, well, I have been thinking about it, Han, and I think, you know, with the South East sort of vibe mm -hmm. and S-E-N, I'm thinking S South. East, E, and then something starting with N. And we know that historically netball has been connected with birds, so the Nighthawks. Oh, 
I like it. Yeah, yeah I do. <laughs> South East, East Nighthawks. Nighthawks. It's hard. <laughs> but it, it's there. And for me, Han, obviously, the, when the Vixens were coming about, they actually chose Fox because the Fox was a predator of the birds. So who knows? They might pick another predator. Oh, that is an excellent anecdote. I didn't know that. Thank you for sharing. It is such a big developing story in the space of Suncorp Super Netball. So, of course, keep your eye on our website because that is where we will have the latest and breaking information between now and then when the season gets underway in 2024. So we leave Clubland there. Let's focus and switch tact back to the international game, shall we, ladies? And the Diamonds are just one of 16 teams that are officially on the ground in Cape Town in South Africa at the moment. They are ready to compete in this two-week tournament. And the team arrives as world number one, Caitlin. But that means there's a lot of pressure on this group. And you were there back in 2019 when we went down to New Zealand. What do you remember about what it is to play in a World Cup? Well, just initially the hype, the feeling, it's obviously one of the pinnacle events of our sport. So the, the excitement around this tournament is really huge. And obviously the Vixens coming off that one goal, uh, sorry, not the Vixens, the Diamonds coming off the one goal loss um, back in 2019 was absolutely devastating. So. It's the one trophy that the diamond that eludes the diamonds at the moment, and they are super, super hungry to complete their set. The first World Cup, ladies, began 60 years ago. It was back in 1963. It took place over in England, and it was Australia that beat New Zealand by just a single goal back then. And this rivalry, but more broadly, international netball means so much to all the nations because it runs deep. And Australia and New Zealand really have been dominating the international fixture since then and jostling for top spot all the time. And what really underlines the rivalry is the fact that rarely do these games ever blow out. They're always seemingly decided by a couple of goals. Back in the 60s, ladies, it was called the World Championships, as you would have known, because as recently as 2015, that's when it was renamed to the Nepal World Cup. It's always been, though, the pinnacle of our game, hasn't it, Kath? And Australia has been so successful and so dominant in the tenure. Yeah, they have. They've won 11 of the 15 World Cups to date. This one in Cape Town will be the 16th. Have a look at that. <laughs> the last, oh, sorry, the, the lowest that they've ever sat was second, and that's because they've played in every single World Cup final. And the finals were only introduced in 1991, so they've played in every single one of those, and only the one time was it against an opponent that wasn't New Zealand, and that was against um, South Africa in 1995 when Irene Van Dyke was part of the team before she went to New Zealand. So it's a rich history of success for the Australian Diamonds and they don't want to be the first side not to even make a World Cup final in this tournament. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're calling the Australian Diamonds to win their 16th World Cup and I love that. But before we get there, Caitlin, we have to understand how the World Cup tournament is going to work when we take a look at the pools and whatnot. Can you run me through it? Well, the way that the teams manage to get to this point, firstly, the host nation, South Africa, automatically qualify. Uh, the next five teams also qualify due to their INF rankings. The next 10 teams make up the rest of the list there and they go through a regional qualifier system and two, the top two from each of those regional qualifiers manage to secure their spot in this World Cup. So 16 total. They're the pools that we looked at, Kath. What about the format and how the games will unfold? Now stop what you're doing and concentrate. <laughs> okay. This isn't as easy as it used to be. Alright, so there we are. We're sitting in pool A. We're in the yellow, let's say. So the top... Um, sorry, you'll play your own teams in your own pool. Then the top three from A and B will form pool F. The top three from C and D forming pool G. And then the ones in red, the bottom of each pool will form um, E. They will then play the top half of that F pool will play the bottom half. So Australia say they come in F1, will play F4, 5 and 6. And then it'll be feeding into the finals. And the finals will kick off on the Saturday and the Sunday. We cannot wait for that. And there's a change from what we're used to, Caitlin, in terms of Suncorp Super Netball rules and adjudications. What happens when we go to the international stage? Yeah, we're straight back into international rules. And what happens with the international rules? Obviously, no Suncorp Super Shots, no power time, no rolling subs and no timeouts. So those are the major differences. Um, 
However, um, for teams to be able to make some of those changes out on court, there is the ability to have an injury time or some of those fake injury times. The sore fingers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sore, sore little pinky <laughs> fingers um, that would allow a coach to make a change during the quarter. So that is the nuts and bolts of what is coming our way, the Netball World Cup, in just a few days' time. Kim, let's give everyone what they want. We want to know who the Diamonds are playing. Take me through the fixtures. Yeah, well, they kick off with the first game against Zimbabwe. That is on Friday, then over to Tonga on Saturday, and then finishing off their pool with Fiji on day three, which is Sunday. But beyond that, we've also looked at some of the teams that they will be potentially coming up against if all is going well. So Australia will play Scotland in that next pool stage, and then Malawi, and then hopefully we get to hit England um, on day seven. We have a bunch of teams that we are going to preview throughout the next hour. But let's begin with our Australian Diamonds. And I thought I wanted to bring another voice into the conversation. And I thought, I know just the person. <laughs> Please, can we welcome into the panel and to our preview show, the one, the only, Sherelle McMahon, fresh from being immortalised in bronze this year down at John Kane Arena. Sherelle, thank you so much for joining us. Now, when we think World Cups, I don't know about the ladies alongside me, but I think about that 1999 winning goal <laughs> that you shot right at the end uh, that clinched victory from the jaws of defeat over New Zealand, uh, and that was in Christchurch all those years ago. You remember this? Uh, I do. Strangely, it was so long ago, but I remember it clearly. Look at the grainy footage. Um, <laughs> but this was a match. We were down by six at three-quarter time, and I was getting ready for the next centre pass at that moment, but uh, we realised, no, that was it, the one goal that got us the the World Cup right at the, right at the end there. So it was amazing um, emotions that came out in that moment. All right, let's take a look, Sherelle, at the 15 players that, according to Stacey Marinkovic and Kath Cox at the end of the table, they are going to bring home another gold medal. Let's take a look. We have the 12 players plus the three reserves. The Diamond Sherelle have a 93% win record in matches that we play at World Cup, so I guess it's no surprise that our Diamonds are heavily weighted as favourites. What do you make of the lineup? Well, I, I think it's a really strong lineup. But I look across the, the different areas of the court and think there's heaps of flexibility there. That's what I really like about it. You can you can visualise what that might look like in the different combinations. And look, I think this Australian Diamonds lineup and the Australian Diamonds lineups from years gone by, they're used to having a target on their back. They're used to being favourites going into into these tournaments. So I think that they'll cope quite well with that, knowing that there are a number of countries that are right there and have some super talent. Kim, what words come to mind when you take a look at the lineup? Oh, I just think consistency, but also versatility, as Shaz said. It's really important to be able to have that at a major tournament. So many games back to back. So the likes of, you know, the, those mid quarters in particular, being able to play all certain positions, but also the defenders being able to play wing defence, the shooters being able to play wing attack. It also keeps these players on their toes. If they are not kicking in when they need to, they're on the bench and the next one comes on. You have to be on your game. Stacey Marinkovic, this will be her first uh, appearance in a World Cup as the head coach of the Diamonds after succeeding Lisa Alexander back in 2020. Caitlin, what will this team for, what will this team stand for, I guess, under the leadership and direction of Stacey at a World Cup? Well, I think I've actually heard Stacey speak at a couple of events and she's spoken about the style of game and the strategy that she's wanting to put out there. And, and I am looking forward to seeing this really fast-paced brand of netball that they're going to put out out there. I think it's smart in terms of the strategy to try and beat the defensive structures of, say, a New Zealand with a zone-based defence and the, the prowess of the Jamaican defensive unit. So um, I'm expecting to see some really fast-paced netball at, uh, to not allow defensive structures to be out there. But I also think that that explains some of the selections that have been made because she's picked people out there in positions that, are, that she, uh, she thinks can, can put out there the strategy that they're after. Kath, unlike previous years, there was no selection camp. The Diamonds have had little time together compared to other nations as well as everyone descends on Cape Town. Is that going to be an issue for us? 
Yeah, look, ideally you have a lot more time than what they've had, but the good thing is there's a lot of combinations within this Australian Diamonds lineup, so they do know each other well. It's a side that's been together for quite a while, the chunk of it as well, so there's, there's a natural understanding, I think, when they do get together. This is the beauty of the rounds for me, though, at a World Cup. We're not going to be challenged in the rounds. It's going to be easy sailing for us. We will win those round games. That's an opportunity for Stacey Marinkovic to put those combinations out on court, to work on particular plays, anything that they want, but they need to challenge themselves in those round games, not get out there and play and potentially fall into bad habits of hoiking the ball because they can, but sticking to some game plans and working on some little goals in those games to make them valuable time for them. Kim, the Diamonds midcourt has got to be the envy of all our competitors <laughs> in Cape Town. How does Stacey Marinkovic go about selecting who will play in the big, ga big games, making the decision of who's going to sit out? Well, I don't even know how she made the decision to get them in the yes, team in the first true. place. My goodness, it was so hard. But I think the great thing about these four is that they all play very, very different. Paige Hadley, you know, safe in the hands. Watson, strong, powerful. Jamie Lee Price, you know, he's got that strength. But as a wing defence, she's a real grinder. And then you've got Ash Brazel, who goes and has a crack at things. So the ability to be able to, and we talk about versatility, the ability to put them out there against different oppositions that are providing something a little bit different each game is important. I don't know who you sit out, to be honest. That, that's a hard one for me. You mentioned Ash Braz. We all know, as was documented a lot this year, this is going to be Ash Brazel's final stint at professional netball. She's aware of that. She's documenting every step of the journey and sharing <laughs> it with her followers as even between now and the last World Cup, the landscape of social media is rapidly evolving and changing. But, Sherelle, oh, I'd love to get God. your insight because because whilst that might be extra motivation for the team to send Ash off in the best way possible with a World Cup gold medal, it's extra pressure as well. Well, it is a little bit of extra pressure, but but what what a great experience for, for her and this team to have to really celebrate that. I think she's the type of person who brings an incredible amount of energy anyway, so I don't think that this is really going to change that for her. Uh, she's had some great experience and brings that to this group and, you know, that attack on the ball, that's what I love uh, really uh, about this Diamonds outfit is that it's really physical, it's really aggressive to the ball and I, I think that that is a really great way for this team to play. Um, and, you know, talking a little bit about um, the, my uh, end, which I always love the goal, is we've been talking a bit about that flexibility and I love a moving circle and I think a lot of other nations now are quite used to a tall holding goal shooter. So I like the, the, that we've really got that flexibility in the circle to be able to really create that movement. And as, as we spoke a little bit about before, just you know, getting around that defensive pressure that it, uh, it's a little bit more used to those high balls going in. I want to expand on your comments around the moving circle. Tell me the form that Steph Wood and Kara Conan are going to bring from Suncorp Super Netball to the inter international stage, in your opinion. Well, I, I think uh, Steph Wood is an absolute magician out there. She is just so creative uh, and has just such a calm head on her shoulders. I think that that's really come to the fore this season. And Cara is just so elusive along the baseline, as, as we see there. And that combination will be so important. Having those links and connections can really be valuable when those pressure moments come on. Uh, and, and I think that, that this, is, this is a really nice combination for the Aussies out there, uh, and it will allow that movement and, and the ball work to come in. I don't think any player, Kath, arrives in Cape Town with bigger expectations on their shoulders and pressure on their shoulders than that of Sophie Garvin, who was selected over Danelle Wallen. When we understand Steph Wood, Kara Conan, their SSN form had them comfortably sitting in the box seat for selection. Sophie Garvin said that her confidence this year at Suncorp Super Netball level wasn't as knocked and as shaken as some people may have think. So how do you think she should approach the big games? Look, that's great to hear that coming from her. I want to see that from her, though. If you take the super shots out of it, this year she sat at 79% shooting in regular time. At the goal attack role, we know she's not going to play that at a World Cup. She may in the rounds if they want to mix it up and keep legs fresh to try it, but she's generally not going to. The beauty for her is that we've seen what she can do for the Australian Diamonds. We've seen her single-handedly almost win games for them. When she's dominant, when she's strong, she's untouchable. And that's the sort of form she needs to find. And I think Stacey Marinkovic will be quite smart in trying to get that out of her early. early yeah. They may get her in the circle and say, stay there and work around her and just build that confidence up.
From one end of the court to the other, Caitlin, how do you think Marinkovic will structure her defensive unit? Well, I think there's versatility there as well, isn't there? Um, you know, potentially seeing the likes of Bruce and Clow in there together. Um, we've seen Clow being really versatile playing out there. We've also seen Bruce out at goal defence. Um, I still think that um, Western is probably their go-to um, goal defence, but I also wouldn't be surprised if at times, and especially in these earlier rounds, we might see Western Western um, out at wing defence with Bruce and Clow behind her. So, um, yeah, and, and obviously the, the existing relationship between Bruce and Ari Young as well is, is one that we can't go past. So I would expect all of them to be getting quite a bit of um, shared court time. Danelle Wallen, Kate Maloney, Ruby Bakewell, Doran, Sherelle, they have been identified as the three reserves heading over with the team, but the only time they will be able to take to the court is if they are a permanent replacement player for one of the other 12 Diamonds, and that is a result of injury or quite serious and considerable family crisis. Now, the Australian selectors have confirmed to us that, in actual fact, those three positions are one of the hardest mentally to get your head around going over with the group. I'd love to know what your advice would be to them. Yeah, and it is a really different thing. I mean, obviously, in tournaments gone by, there's a cut-off date. So, you know, once that tournament's started, there is no changes. And that is a really big shift in mindset for these players as they're going through. I think it's great for the teams to have that flexibility and be able to to really replace teams. So we'll hopefully be seeing them at their best. But I, I, my advice to them is just to go in there with the absolute thought that they will be taking the court. And I would like to see them approach training in that way. I'm sure they've been encouraged to do that, that, that they want to own it um, if those opportunities come along. And, and so that would be my advice, just approach it that, you know, at any moment they could they could take the court um, and keep their minds really sharp and into it. And, and I think being engaged is going to be what helps them. Sherelle McMahon, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck and enjoy, I should say, the World Cup that's coming our way in a matter of days. I absolutely will. Thanks, guys. Sherelle McMahon there, the one and only helping us preview the Australian Diamonds as we continue the countdown to the World Cup in South Africa. It's like my sacred ground.